Hi, I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard um, from Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. Today we have a video, a video, um, and we're doing a sew along, a sew along where Gigi Bai will be leading us through Jen Kingwell's The Gypsy Wife Quilt, which is awesome. Um, so these are videos that Gigi will produce um, and help us understand how to do it. And Corey Dutton, um, a law student, is going to learn to quilt. So um, it's for beginners, advanced people, even law students. Um, and it will be great. So uh, I hope this helps. So where do you find the pattern? Um, Jen Kinkwell's pattern can be found at Amazon. It's again called the Gypsy Wife Quilt. It's super popular. You can also get it at Uptown Needle and Craftworks here in New Orleans. Just um, look them up online and call them or at any quilt shop. So get the pattern and join us. Hi guys, I'm setting up a new way of doing my filming so that you can see all my pieces as I'm working on the Indian hatchet. I have a picture that I printed out um, so that you can see it's you know, these squares and you're going to draw lines on your triangles I'm sorry, on other squares like this, sew along that seam line and cut it off and flip it up and you'll do that on either side and you'll end up with the shape that you need for the four squares and when you put it together it'll make that little point in the middle. Um, so I am choosing to do um, all the same where they did different on here and I'm doing all the same lighter on the outer blocks that's just something that I wanted to do because I feel like mine is getting very busy and it needs a place to rest or your eye needs some place to be able to rest so that being said let's get started um, you turn your smaller squares over and draw a line from one point to another point. I use the um, mechanical pencil because it is so thin and it, um, it makes just a faint little line there. You can use anything that works for you. I, um, I like it because it's um, thin and it's just a good way for me. It works for me. Um, if you're doing a dark corner, then you can use um, something else, maybe a, a white ch Taylor's chalk or a chalk rolling pen or something like that um, that would show up. But sometimes the dark, you can even see if you were to do it on the dark one, you might even still be able to see a line like that. Can you see that? It still shows up. It's right there. So it's up to you what you use for your marking. So here's our pattern. Um, we've cut our, the big squares are three inches square, what is this? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Um, three and a half. And then, um, now, in the directions, it says to go ahead and cut this in half and then um, sew it on. I like doing it this way because then I'm not working, I'm not trying to sew along a bias point. Um, and I'll teach you a little trick in just a second that you might like um, for getting an extra little triangle out of here, a half square triangle out of here. So we're going to sew right along our line that we've drawn. From corner to corner. And now, if you'd like to be able to save this piece over here, because normally we would just come a quarter of an inch out like that and trim it off and then have just extra fabric for something else. But if you'd like, you can come here. It's going to be tiny, but you can make yourself a line, a half an inch from your sew line. Sew it again. And then we cut it off. Cut it 
right here, cut straight down the middle between the two um, lines, the two, between the two sew lines. So it gives you a quarter of an inch seam on your actual block that you're using. So there's a quarter of an inch seam right here, and I'll press it in just a minute. And then you're left with a small, cute half square triangle. So that's one way not to waste your extra um, pieces that normally you just hack off. So I've got one done. I've got that one done. Now I'm going to add my other piece and I'll make another half square triangle. And I might be able to use that in something later, um, whether it be a um, pinwheel or a pinwheel square and a square. It might work with some one of our um, pieces that we have to make still. Um, I'm going to press this. I like to press it um, with it flat and then I press it open. And you can press it either way. I like to go towards the darker fabric when I can. And there we have it. We have our first little square on there. And we'll draw a line. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line on all of my squares here. And I actually made an extra one. There we go. There's one. And here's another one. So I have to do... Um, and then the directions in the book say to come, cut it here, and then you would actually sew it on um, right sides together and flip it up. I just like working with the square the way it is. Um, I think it's easier this way. So I will do this with four squares. That's an extra. And um, get them all sewn on. And then we'll come back with putting it um, together. Okay, when doing our um, Indian hatchet, this is a good time to do what we call chain piecing. And that's to go ahead and get all of our squares on top of our other squares. So from one side to the other, and we just keep right on going. We have them on here, we have them marked, and now we're ready to just keep on sewing. So we just keep going and moving right into the next one. And then later when we finish doing all four, we can snip the threads between them and they'll be held together kind of like a pinnacle. Here's another one. And just keep right on going. When you're starting at a point like this, it's um, sometimes easier to be coming off of another piece onto this one so that it doesn't be down inside that little hole, the little um, needle plate piece down below. I'm dropping all four corners down on line, and I'm not going to do the, um, I just wanted to show you that this, now they're all done on one side, so I just take my little scissors, all my big ones, whatever I can find, and snip right between each one, and that's called chain piecing, and that gives us, um, an easy way and so then we have that one's all the way done but now we have this to go back and do the other side we'll put these on here and draw our lines and go back and do the other side so I will now go back and do my half inch mark so I can make some more of these little tiny half square triangles that might be useful for something else Okay, when doing our um, Indian hatchet, this is a good time to do what we call chain piecing, and that's to go ahead and get all of our squares on top of our other squares, so from one side to the other, and we just keep right on going. We have them on here, we have them marked, and now we're ready to just keep on sewing, so we just keep going, and moving right into the next one and then later when we finish doing all four 
you can snip the thread between them and they'll be held together kind of like a pennant. Here's another one. When you're starting at a point like this, it's um, sometimes easier to be coming off of another piece onto this one so that it doesn't be down inside that little hole, the little um, needle plate piece down below. And so I have all four corners done on mine, and I'm not going to do the, um, I just wanted to show you that this, now they're all done on one side, so I just take my little scissors, all my big ones, whatever I can find, and snip right between each one, and that's called chain piecing, and that gives us, um, an easy way and so then we have that one's all the way done but now we have this to go back and do the other side we'll put these on here and draw our lines and go back and do the other side so I will now go back and do my half inch mark so I can make some more of these little tiny half square triangles that might be useful for something else okay so just a reminder that when you put your piece on, you're going to sew from corner to corner, and then if you come up half an inch, draw another line, and sew along this line, then cut them in half, you end up with some half square triangles that look like this. They're tiny, but they, like I said, they could easily be the inside of a, um, some kind of a fun thing, or they could, what was that one called? The, the half square triangle, hello, the half square triangle um, block had a bunch of cute little half square triangles so saving these for something for later um, it may not be within this quilt but in another quilt it's nice and it's a nice thing to save as opposed to just little triangle pieces if we were to just cut it off right here we'd be left with some triangle pieces that we then have to go back and sew again so I'm going to take this and I'm going to um, sew along my second line then I will cut it right down the middle and be left with some half square triangles. We'll be back in a second to put together our um, Indian hatchet, which could end up being one of my favorite ones to do. It's so pleasant and easy and ah, I love it. Okay, so I've got my um, triangle pieces added to the square and I'm ready to put it together. I'll sew this one, I'll place it on top of this one line everything up perfectly as best I can. I would have a quarter of an inch seam along here so I'm going to switch from my open toe foot which made it easy for me to see where I was going. I will switch back to my one of my quarter inch foot for on um, the machine so I can make sure I'm good quarter inch and I think I've said in the beginning to always try and be at the same machine. I've been at so many different machines um, with this quilt I've done it. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening with my seam allowances and how things go together. Um, I recommend pinning this because it would be easy to switch this and go in a different direction and that, that would be a really cool looking um, shape. That's not the one we're going for. We're going for this shape right here that makes it look like a little bow tie in the middle. And I like this block so much that I might go back and do these two at a different color and maybe put darks on the outside. So I don't know, I'll play with it a little bit, but I really like this block. And like I just did this, there are quite a few variations on um, the, um, if you Google Indian hatchet, they've got lots of different variations of how you can put these things together and make a big quilt with just the Indian hatchet. Um, pattern piece or block. So just something to know and look at. So I'm going to go sew this together, this one to this one, and I might just clip it really quickly. I do love these little clips. They make it so super simple, easy, and um, instead of pinning, it's just a different, doesn't make it um, not better, it's just different, and I do like using them. I was working earlier on a um, lunch bag for my granddaughter 
out of laminated cotton, and you can't poke holes in the laminated cotton because it leaves the hole. And so I um, used the clips instead. Okay, so I'm going to get these sewn together and be back to see you in a minute. Okay, so it's all done. We have done um, the two, top two pieces sewn together, bottom two pieces sewn together, and then it comes together just really quickly and easily in kind of a fun little pattern. I'm really loving this. And the bonus is the way we did it, we ended up with some extra little half square triangles that we can use to maybe make something fun. I'm going to go cut the dog ears off of these and see if I can put them together as something. I always have a little spastic when it comes to this. Let's see. Can I get it together? That's the one that's not right. Let's see. Oh, goodness. I'll get it as a pinwheel somehow. Pinwheel, pinwheel. Almost a pinwheel. Almost a pinwheel. Almost a pinwheel. Somehow it will be a pinwheel. And so I'll use these <laughs> to make something fun. And or I will pass them on to someone else who can make something fun. But for now we have the Indian hatchet done and we're ready to work on the rest of our um, squares. We have pinwheels bordered on page 19. We have um, a regular pinwheel that ends up being four and a half inches so I'll have to see what size that would be. We have a square and a square um, that's three and a half. We have a square and a square that's four and a half. We have an hourglass bordered. We actually have seven square and a squares that are three and a half inches. And then we have three square and a squares that are four and a half inches. I'm going to paper piece those. I'm not going to do tutorials for all of those because we've already done them as a tutorial. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, ask them on Facebook or send me a message or whatever. And then um, go back and look at some of the older um, videos and you can see how we did the hourglass or the courthouse steps when we did those in the first beginning ones. Okay, good luck with section six. Those are the two big ones. We had Nurse's Cross, which almost killed me, and the Indian Hatchet, and the rest are ones we've all done. Pinwheel bordered, square to square, courthouse steps, hourglass, hourglass bordered. So have fun with it and um, I'm going to be coming back to talk to y'all some more later about some of our products that we are getting sponsors to share with us. This is Elizabeth Townsend Guard from Just Wanna Quilt. You've been listening to Gigi Bai take us through an aspect of the Gypsy Wife Quilt by Jen Kingwell. Make sure you get the pattern. You can get the pattern at Amazon or Uptown Needle and Craft Works here in New Orleans or at your local quilt shop. Um, you need the pattern to be able to understand what's going on, and then um, Gigi helps us through it. So join us. Come play with us. Come to our Facebook group, Just Want a Quilt. Uh, go to our website and be part of our newsletter where we'll help you through the Gypsy Wife Quilt. Um, that's JustWantAQuilt.com, spelled W-A-N-N-A, Just Want a Quilt. Um, and of course, listen to our podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and if you can't a chance to like it on those, it would be super awesome. <laughs>